Welcome to Decorating Tips and Tricks. I'm Anita Joyce with Kelly Wilkness. This is episode 309, New Kitchen Trends 2019. And the show notes for today's episode can be found at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 309. Uh, Are you cooking anything up today? I am always cooking something up in my kitchen. And uh, there are so many interesting new kitchen ideas slash trends that could become classics out there for 2019. We thought that we should dive into them in particular rather than just, you know, grouping the kitchen in with the other trends since it's such an important room in your house. Yes. Yes. A very important room and the trends do change from time to time. So it really is good to stay on top of this. And although I'm not so much a trend person that I follow a lot of trends, I think the kitchen trends you really do need to stay on top of because if you are getting tiles or a countertop or something, you certainly don't want to choose some material that's kind of on its way out because those are such big ticket items. Yeah. And because you spend a lot of time in the kitchen, I know I certainly do. You want it to be organized, updated, and beautiful, and you deserve it to be. So we're going to come at you with some of the newer kitchen trends, which some of things are coming back around again. And you can sort through and we'll sort through with you things that, you know, really are trendy and things that could be classics or will always be in style. So we'll we'll sort of cherry pick off the things that we think could uh, be lasting trends and bring those to your attention as we go through. Okay. Are we ready to talk trends? I am. I really think one of the biggest trends that I'm seeing in the kitchen for 2019 involves the backsplash. Mm. And a little shout out to Jamie S. and to Taryn for going ahead and painting the backsplash and making it spectacular. In particular, Taryn, who, as we explained in a prior episode, her tile in her kitchen went goes all the way up. And that's what we're seeing in this trend, that the backsplashes aren't stopping between the counter and the bottom of your cabinets. They're going all the way up to the ceiling and almost in effect acting like the accent wall, which this might sound confusing because we told you the accent wall was out, but <laughs> this, this is different. Is a, this is different. So it's the backsplashes where you're taking the tile all the way up. And I think that this is a hallmark of the umbrella trend that we're seeing in 2019 with kitchens is that they're more seamless. Mm, mm-hmm. I think it also has that feeling of maybe a restaurant's kitchen, mm-hmm. the feeling of the tile going up to the ceiling. And, you know, if you have counter, if you have upper cabinets on the wall, you can't take the tile to the ceiling. So really, this is kind of a look we're seeing in kitchens where there are no upper cabinets on a particular wall. I for one, love this look. It is really striking and beautiful. And I'm not really worried about this particular trend looking dated later. I mean, are you? I think it's still going to be pretty cool. No, I think it really is a great look. And it, it, I mean, it, it, like you're saying, it has that utilitarian feel almost, but in a, in a good, good way. way. Yes. Um, and it's it's nice and clean looking. There's not a lot of stop and starts, hence the seamless feel of it. I really like it. Um, I have a little bit of that going on because my counter is the marble. And then I just did the whole slab of marble as the backsplash. So again, it has that seamless feel to it. The counter and the backsplash are the same and there are no grout lines for me. So that sort of gives me this cleaner, uh, you know, sort of palette going on. Um, With the tile that we're seeing that's going all the way up, in, in many cases, there is grout. There are grout lines. So, you know, you want to maybe take that into consideration if you are thinking about that look. Um, you know, would that be a little busy for your kitchen? Maybe you want to make sure that you're choosing a grout that coordinates with the tile rather than contrasting with it so you don't have so much visual activity. And I think that, yes, if you had a whole wall of upper cabinets, um, it would, I don't think it would look as as good if you just had the tile and then you tried to put tile up above it. So yeah, I think that you have to either have lesser upper cabinets or they have to, you know, 
there has to be some, some area where maybe it's where the hood of your your range is or your stove, and then you do it there and there aren't cabinets on the side because to get this particular look, you have to have an expansive wall. Don't you think, Anita? Oh, I think so. And I've even seen some situations where the tile is going up to the upper cabinets, but the upper cabinets are only about a foot or about two feet tall and they're up at the ceiling. So yeah. that expansive tile goes all the way up there. It's really a stunning look. I I love it. I think it's beautiful. And you know what I think would go so well with this look is what you've done in your kitchen, which I'm still so in love with, those iron and glass doors, which I, please, we got a link to those. Okay. Just so stunning. If you had marble in the kitchen, which you do, and these glass and dark metal, I guess they're iron right? Yeah. Iron and mm-hmm. glass. Yeah. Factory iron doors. Yeah. Door Factory. Yeah. Iron uh, and glass doors. It's a, it's an industrial look, but it's not a cold look. It's a very classic, uh, maybe kind of even a loft feeling to it. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, these factory type of doors were used at the turn of the century. You would see them in those kinds of loft buildings, well, now they're considered lofts, but at the time, you know, they might have been industrial spaces in New York or Chicago, some of our Boston, some of our older cities. And that's really kind of where the look comes from. And um, so they're metal casement type windows. Um, and you can definitely use them as I have as exterior doors. But here's an idea and a trend that's coming along, um, which may help you to get more of an open concept feel, or if you have an open concept feel in your kitchen dining area, it may help you delineate the space. You could use these type of doors and it doesn't have to be necessarily metal. It could also be, have wood panes, but you could do a glass room divider type of, Mm -hmm. of, of like just drop in a wall. And that kind of gives you the togetherness, but yet there's a separation. There's definitely a delineation between the rooms. We're seeing that coming down the pike in kitchens. You know, if the kitchen is big enough or, and if the house is set up in such a way where there is this openness, um, you can add a wall like that and it won't restrict it. I think it would be quite beautiful. Oh, yes. And you know how we've talked about when there's when something is oversaturated, overdone, that usually then there's a backlash from it from in a decorating sense. And so although I think white kitchens are classic and will always be in style, I think that's what we're seeing now with kitchen cabinetry. People are saying, mm, you know, let's see something different. So now dark cabinetry is very in style, although I personally would probably be a little hesitant to do a whole kitchen in that because I'm not sure how long it'll be, you know, on trend. Uh, but I do love the idea of doing an island in the dark color, a, a dark, dramatic paint color. So I think that's a nice way to kind of add it uh, where you're not going to have to be married to it for that long. Yeah, definitely darker colors are coming on strong for 2019. We've discussed that overall in your home and and we're seeing that in the kitchen as well. And yes, I think the classic white kitchen, not just because I have one, but I think that is always going to be a classic and you you can't go wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, adding in these darker colors like a navy or a deep, deep green, like that Charleston kind of green that's almost a black mm-hmm. or a black. Beautiful. Really, really sharp. And especially if you have white elements, it can be really beautiful together. And again, it it is probably a trend that may or may not become a classic like the white. I don't think mm-hmm. anything is going to be classic like a white kitchen. True, true. Um, and if you mix it with the gold, like we're seeing now, the, the navy with the gold, mat, like isn't that just so sharp if you see some oh, of those pictures yeah. on in, in Pinterest and whatever. But mm-hmm. I think that combination in four years, it's going to be like, wow, you did your kitchen in 2019. <laughs> like I see that yeah. being very trend centric, like mm-hmm. really looking like that was a hallmark right. of a certain time, just like the distressed cabinet. It's like, oh, wow. I know when you did your kitchen, was that mm-hmm. 1998 kind mm-hmm. of time, you know, circa. So I think I would stay away from that. But if you love it and you want to give it a whirl, this is where you can play with the trends in your kitchen. 
on the paint color of cabinets, which, you know, in, you could do on your own. We have mm-hmm. plenty of True. listeners like our friend Ann Anderson, who's painted her cabinets herself. True. And several of you have already done that. You could change it up. So if you want to live with that beautiful dark color with some gold accents right now for the next year or two or three or five, and, and you know what? If you love it, and stick with it. But that's something you could change back to white later on. I wouldn't go and get super, super trendy on my countertops or my tile because that's going to cost you a lot of money and more than likely that's not something you can DIY. No, but speaking of countertops, when I was at the Houston Design Center recently, I saw a showroom where they had porcelain countertops that looked almost exactly like marble. Wow. Really beautiful. And so uh, porcelain yeah. like your sink. Well, it's porcelain. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's made of porcelain, but she said it's not going to crack like, you know, like a plate so easily. Right. So like a, like a kitchen, uh, like a um, bathroom sink well, or it's toilet. Like a, well, I don't know if I'm going to say, <laughs> well, don't say it's like a toilet. Just like your toilet. You know, I don't even Isn't like that, that great? word. That'd be, that'd be so great. Let's get that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, now well, I'm, I'm just to saying go. like they don't. Excuse me, I have to open my. I have to open my Purell now. Excuse me, (laughs) let me take a minute. Uh, Okay, well, but they do the veining on it so that it looks like marble. Oh, I would like to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look. I'll find one. I'll find. Did you see it in person? I did. I thought it was quite nice. And is it? um, Pardon me. Does it look like Carrera? Is that what they're going for? Yes, yes. I, I mean, it comes in different in different designs, but that's right. certainly one. You know, it's another one of these man made materials that they're making to look like marble, right? You know, so there's some other options. Yeah, and so it it's not going it to it's not, etch. It's not going to etch exactly. Okay, well, let me just go back to the cabinet colors because there is something that I did see um, that you know people just cannot shake this millennial pink. There's something about this blushy pink they will not yeah, let go I saw- of. Them. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, oh, it's over. It's over. You know, I hope you didn't buy Put anything a fork in it, yeah, in yeah. it or, you know, any, at least in anything expensive. But now I saw in a few different places that they're showing this millennial pink in kitchen cabinets, which I just thought was so yuck. I don't like no, it. No, 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 no. That's no, no, uh, please don't. I don't yeah. think that's a good idea. And I, I really didn't, wasn't that drawn to it now. And I don't see that. That seems like that's going to last for about two months, which is an awful lot of money to spend for your cabinet tree painting them. Yeah. Or all that effort if it's only going to be in style for two months. I it, I don't see that sticking around. I really don't. Right. And, and it, I, I haven't, I saw it one place. I really am not seeing that other place. I saw it. I did see it in a couple of places, but you know, it was, it was pretty, you know, but I would, who really would really want a, a pink kitchen unless you had like a really kitschy kind of house. Um, so I and just all the husbands now just screamed in unison, <laughs> no, <laughs> but maybe if you were going to bake like a um, pineapple upside down cake and wear your heels and have your apron on and, and your turquoise apron, mm-hmm. it'd be so cute, you know, but if that's mm-hmm. the way you're, you know, you're decorating your whole house, maybe you could pull that off. But the pink cabinets, no, no, no. That's something where that is, you know, like you have to have your which could we call it like trend are like you have to have your trend radar on and just say no like no i'm not right. doing that right and i think another thing with the the new kitchens this is really something that is hard, harder to retro to a kitchen but what i'm seeing a lot of is hidden storage because that's the thing now is a sleek countertop that's not covered up with the, your toaster and your mixer and your napkin, you know, in the old days yes. where they have the holder for your napkins to go in right. and your salt and pepper shakers. Right. It's part of the your whole flour feel. and your right. sugar and all that stuff. And now right. it's get everything off your countertops except the stuff you absolutely have to have there. And so it really, it really is a, a movement toward hiding all of these things. Uh, you know, I mean, so... Yeah, so I think there's a lot more cabinetry where things are hidden, the little garages where you can hide the appliances or even putting them in the pantry with uh, plugs in there to plug in your things. So there's a lot of things that can be done. And I I don't know, just even the high-tech kitchen in general, I think that's definitely coming on pretty strong. Yeah, 
Okay, let's just jump to this storage idea. There's a couple of ways that you can do this, and we're seeing they really sort of bubble to the surface now this year. A pantry wall of storage. Now, you know, I would love a walk-in pantry in my kitchen. That's just not going to happen. We could have probably had one, but then I would have had to forego a powder room downstairs, which I thought was more important. Yeah, I think that's more important. Yeah, so it's more important. So you can build something out. If you have a wall in your kitchen, instead of doing just individual cabinets, you could actually build a fairly wide but shallow wall of cabinets. Is this... Is this one with doors on it or are we going to be yeah. looking at your cans of tuna? No, 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 no. And we'll get to that in depth in a moment too. Okay. But no, no, no. This will have doors on it. You okay, can do good. sliding I'm, doors I'm feeling maybe. better already. Yeah. You could do – so just think of it sort of like it just little bumps out. Like even if it was 18 inches, 14 inches, that, that can house a lot of cans and cereal boxes and – juice boxes and all the other things that you might want to be putting in there, snacks for the kids and things like that. So look around your kitchen, think, you know, is there a spot where I could do that? You know, do I have something decorative? Like if I really, really needed that, if I had a bigger family, the place that I could do that would be where I I put in that hutch, you know, in my kitchen and that area where now I have the hutch and the chair. Now the hutch, the bottom does hold big mixing bowls and things like that. And the drawers hold various um, handheld appliances that I don't use like uh, that much, like the can opener. You know, I got rid of the electric can opener and so I just have the can opener or some extra spoons and things like that. So it is useful, but if I had to have more space for foodstuffs and things like that, I could actually create something right there because I have two walls that are not too far apart and I could just put in some shelves and have some cabinet doors made. And it will be pretty exactly. simple. Well, that's a good point. In fact, you could use your, you know, an armoire or your cabinet, your, uh, what did you call it? Oh, the, the hutch that I have. The I hutch, know you hate, hutch. you hate the hutch word, it, but it is a hutch. I don't, I, well, I you hate like the word hutch. But I, don't, I know but you I told don't, me that. I know. But you I don't do. dislike a hutch itself. It's just a word I don't like. <laughs> uh, but it's the yeah, word. Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. There's some more judo. I don't know what else to call it. No, call it a hutch. It's fine. It is a hutch. It, right. So, I mean, but you could use that for, or an armoire. You know, a lot of times there's armoires that have the doors and you could put things, uh, make sure there's some shelves. You could get a lot of stuff in an armoire. Right. So look around your kitchen. I mean, this, I mean, this is not a, a new idea. Oh, oh, t- a trend storage in the kitchen. But what we're saying is it's the, the pantry wall, in, in a sense, and being very simple and and not having open shelving, which is another thing that is a trend, it, it'll be closed off and it will have a substantial amount of space. So that's something that we're seeing now being built into new kitchens. And I think it's a lovely way to house everything. And again, very seamless. So let's jump into this open shelving. Has anybody out there struggled, felt lesser about themselves because they just couldn't do open shelving. It was everywhere. Well, it was everywhere. Then I heard it was out and now I hear it's back in. So oh, no. it's another I, whiplash it's thing. It is out, 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 out. For well, I'm still seeing it and, and hearing that it's in. So that's interesting. We're hearing conflicting things on that. Oh, no. But I've got- it is hard. And, you know, I mean, here's the thing with it. It's you really can't store you really have to be very careful about what you can store that. In fact, you know, when I put these cabinets in my kitchen, I thought, oh, I'm going to do the glass front cabinets. I love collecting dishes and blah, blah, blah. I'll have all this room to store all that stuff. Well, then it really looked messy. So I ended up taking a lot of these dishes out and just putting, you know, decorative things there. So now I feel like it's kind of wasted space. So, you know, it's so the same thing with open shelves. I mean, it can be wasted space because there's only certain things you can store there. You're not going to be able to store, you know, your, your pla- you know, any any kind of, you know, plastic plates the kids are using or whatever, it's not really going to be great for that. Exactly. So what I'm reading and seeing is that everyone is, you know, the people that are on the, you know, cutting edge of kitchens, they have already given in to the reality that open shelving doesn't work. So Mm. anybody who's been wrestling with it, I know I did. I was like, I want that open shelving so darn bad when I make my kitchen. But the fact is, 
my kitchen is a nice size. It's the biggest kitchen I've ever had, I think. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's, it's there's just not a lot of cabinet space. Yeah. Well, because your I house didn't want is, what, to have... 1894 or something? When was right. it built? But I, 1886. But I didn't want walls of cabinetry either, you know, and I didn't, I wasn't going to have any space over my stove and things like that. And I wanted to bring in this piece of furniture and not, you know, create more cabinetry in the other area. So I wanted to have it that sort of mixed with built-ins and furniture. So to work in open shelving would have been really difficult for me. And it would have made me crazy because I would have constantly been wanting it to look beautiful. But it, the truth of the matter is your kitchen has to function. It can yeah, be beautiful and function. You just have to be smart about it. So I'm I am declaring that uh, open shelving has, in effect, died on the shelf. <laughs> okay. So to let it go. It's, Don't it's worry hard. about it. Yeah, it's hard to make that work. It really is. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I is it's a beautiful look, but I think functionally speaking, it's it's so hard to pull off. And then yeah. it's just not. If you have a large kitchen, I think you know you could quote unquote waste some space with that and just do it for decorative purposes. But yeah, from a functional standpoint, I'm with you. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today, and let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot C-O slash DTT and use the code DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. When something swings, it swings really far. So Mm -hmm. we're going from the hot, hot open shelving trend to now the pantry wall of storage. You know, it's like <laughs> yep, yep, the closed yep. off wall. Like, you know, it's like a, a giant, giant closet of Cheerios that you can hide all your things in. But I think it's much more practical and can be very beautiful when it's done right. Well, and I'm trying to train myself not to have so much stuff in my pantry and then you don't need as much space. But you know, I was raised by people who were kids in the depression. And so they, well, I guess they, well, I don't know, they were born a little bit after it, but that mentality of you can't have too much food in your house. Well, didn't you tell us recently that, that you were a supersized family? 
right? well, they would buy get the biggest well, not that we're thing. super size <laughs> no no but like get, make it the biggest you know if you had a choice between small medium or large you'd get the biggest one yeah but you know i am I know. And then you end up throwing everything out because it's expired because we just don't eat it fast enough. Right. So I'm moving toward more of a, you know, smaller quantities of everything and just eating it faster. But what is so, which is really such a better way to go too. I mean, you know, sometimes something's on sale and you're like, oh, I'll buy four of those. Well, no, if you I, buy it at Costco, store it. it's a, it's, it's a year supply. Yeah. I don't go there. I don't do that. Well, I, less and less. I know. Because okay, I'm so tired of buying these big containers of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole plastic thing. That's a whole nother story. Oh, don't uh, get me started. Yeah. Well, stone that paired with these dark cabinets is pretty spectacular. I mean, stone in the kitchen is- A stone fireplace in the kitchen? Oh, what a dream would oh, that be. Oh, stop. A stone fireplace. I mean, <laughs> yes, yes. Let's all get one of those. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about countertops. So- Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. So stone countertops, you know- the, the darker, now everything's going a little darker. Like we're saying that the trends, when they swing, they swing wide and back and forth like a pendulum. So everybody was doing lots and lots of white. And now we're seeing the darker colors in the cabinetry. And to go along with that, the trend in 2019 is this stone countertops, but not like that stone we were seeing in the late 90s, mm-hmm. early not the 2000s. No, not not high gloss, not shine, matte stone mm-hmm. paired with yeah, like dark a soap cabinets. stone would be an example, yeah, right? Yeah, could mm-hmm. be, but also it could be any stone, but honed. Mm-hmm. Right, but, right. You know, we know because we read Kelly's blog, you know, when you hone something, it is a lot harder to take care of. So you mm-hmm. must mm-hmm. tread with caution there because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that is a big ticket item. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I think honing it, something it, takes the shine off, but that also leaves the stone much more porous. Uh, that's so it can point. absorb things. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'm seeing, like we've been talking about, the white, everything was very neutral everywhere, especially the kitchen. And what we're seeing is, like you said, the pendulum went to the white and now it's going the other direction. So not just with the countertop, uh, not just with the cabinetry, I should say, but even in other things in the kitchen, I think the color is coming back uh, in different ways, like in appliances and in uh, furniture, like chairs, I think more color uh, in different places in the kitchen. I think we're going to see more of that. But, uh, you know, if you, but a great way to add the color without committing so much is to add it with a chair cushions, maybe uh, a runner on your table, placemats and and things like that. Dishes that are easy to change out when you are done with, with that color. Exactly. Exactly. So if you want to play around with these darker colors, but you have your gorgeous white kitchen and you love it and it is your classic kitchen, then yeah, do what Anita's saying. Even I've toyed with the idea of putting a rug under my table that, I, you know, I don't know when the people I live with are going to be able to handle that, really, <laughs> where I would be happy on a daily basis. It's so much easier just to sweep and dust bust and wipe it up than if I had a rug there, but I think it will look spectacular. So if you have a white kitchen, maybe you want to bring in a color in that way, add a, an accent rug someplace, whether it's I under the table. I love that idea. Yeah. What or a just- great way. And I love a colorful rug in a neutral room because it just is a way to add some color, but it's there's something about it being on the floor that doesn't make it feel so, it still feels neutral, the room does to me. Yeah, I think you're right. There's a, there's one image of this white kitchen that's popping to mind right now. And I, this has a very, very vibrant sort of tribal-y Persian type of rug. And I've seen, I, you know, if anybody spends any time on Pinterest looking at kitchens, they might have seen this one as well. And it does look so spectacular. There's dark wood, white, and then basically the pop in the entire room is that rug. And it's spectacular. Mm-hmm. It sounds beautiful. Another thing that's coming... Uh, on trend for 2019 is statement appliances. Oh, now, mm-hmm. you know, that all comes with a big price tag. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I would venture to say that if you spent the money on a statement appliance, that it is going to be a classic. And so don't worry about that ever going out of style. 
So if that's something you might be interested in. Are you talking about big appliances like refrigerators or are you talking about that gorgeous new color KitchenAid mixer I've been seeing? Oh, well, I guess you could talk about all those things, but I was talking about the bigger appliances oh, like uh-huh. the stove mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the fridge mm-hmm. and things those like are big. that. Mm-hmm. And usually when you're saying this statement appliance, my, you know, people's minds goes to the, the range, the stove, something right. like that. Right. Oh my gosh. I saw one. What was I reading? Oh, um, I, I picked up, I don't usually read this magazine, but I picked up a bunch at my local thrifty. Somebody must come in and drop off magazines. I do too, but I, and it's great because maybe, hopefully maybe she or he takes mine and I take theirs. <laughs> Architectural Digest. So I, you oh, know, and, yeah. yeah. And they give them mm-hmm. to you like 10 for a dollar or something like that. Oh, okay. So I got a bunch of them and they were all very recent ones. And so the, the one from uh, December had a stove in it. The stove was three hundred thousand oh, dollars. Stop it! Yeah, it Who's was paying blue. That? It was that um, how do you pronounce it? Lacuna. Uh, Lacuna. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'm not pronouncing it right either. But yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Well, I stock them on internet. Oh, uh, three hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah, we won't be getting that. One. So that's a statement <laughs> appliance for sure. But you know, it, it's functional art. I mean, I was fortunate enough to. Uh, Purchase this home and the the my fabulous stove came with it. Now it certainly needed. And yours is a statement stove. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's yeah. function. You know, it's functional. It's art. How old is it? It's it like uh, 1900s in, or something. No, the stove is from 1929. Okay, well, close. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. super. It's you know, it's super old. Um, and of course, we had to have it refurbished and all that. But I, when I was paying for it to be refurbished, and I was like, oh wow, well, you know, I could get blah blah blah, but. It is. It, first of all, it functions beautifully. I didn't know that now, then, and what mm-hmm. I know now, I'm so happy it's with it. So but it's so unique. So yeah, unique. I think that was worth functional art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, another thing that, that we've talked about before, but I think it, it, it bears repeating and I'm seeing even more option now are the mixed metals in the kitchens. I mean, you don't have to have your lighting match the heart, match your fixtures at your faucet or your, pulls on the cabinets. I mean, it really is kind of go with what you love. And so you don't really have to worry so much. You're not locked in like the old days. You really can go with those things that you love and and mix it up. And I think it's a more fun look that way, more playful and more creative looking. Yeah. I think it's a more more curated look. I love mixed metals and everything, but I remember when the oil rubbed bronze or mm, came mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, really, I was like the poster girl for that. I just loved that finish. And I had my, had to have my poles were in that and mm-hmm. my uh, faucet was in that and my this was in that and everything. I even in my powder room in the other house, I even went as far as to get the under bits of the sink in the oil rub bronze. Which, you know, that's crazy. And so why, you know, it, but it's fine if, if you have chrome under there and you have something else there, it, it can all work together and it can be really beautiful. And it feels more like it's built over time look rather than, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I bought everything and it all matches. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking, I was talking a little bit earlier about the new technology and have you seen these light switches where you, they, you can turn things on by just waving your hand in front of the switch? No, that's something new. So I don't but know. The way I, I talk with my hands, I'd be turning the lights. It'd yeah, be like, they would be going, <laughs> yeah, or I would have a seizure. I'd be turning the lights on and off all like all day long. <laughs> so you, so what you're saying is you don't have those lights that you clap on and off. Is that no. what you're saying? <laughs> that would be very bad. I'm a big clapper too. No, it'd be very bad. <laughs> well, I don't, you may have to get kind of in front of the light, but wouldn't that be so nice? Because sometimes you walk in, your hands are full of groceries, you got yeah. your purse and That's your keys true. and your phone. That would be so nice just to kind of move your elbow in front of the light switch and have them come on. Or I guess if you've got one of your really high tech houses, you can tell Alexa to turn the lights on for you. Yeah. So I, I yeah, mean, that's, she can do a lot of things. She can. Well, not at our house. We don't have her, we don't have her connected to anything much except the TV, but yeah. But, but, it, but, but she has the potential of taking over your life if you let her. Well, we've locked the door. You know, she's behind the door. Yeah. I just, I'm time. waiting for her to be able to I don't really him. trust her very much. So we <laughs> kind of keep her put away like a genie in the bottle, you know? Oh my gosh. Another thing that is interesting is, Linear lighting. 
Now, what do you mean by that? Okay, so lights that are long and they might have uh, several light sources, you know, maybe several, several uh, shades or whether, whatever the shade could be made of is metal or glass or fabric or something like that, but they're long and that would look lovely over an island. And that's sort of replacing the pendants. Um, mm, the pendants mm-hmm. are looking a little dated right now. Not, well, not all of them. I wouldn't. No, no, not all of them, but some pendants, depending on the shape of the shade. And you can also obviously change a lot of the shades. On your I pendants. don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, let me just preface what you're saying. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. That's, that's kind of the new trend, but I don't think everybody that has pendant lights needs to go you know, toss them. Oh, I agree. They do not. No, I'm certainly not advocating for anyone to toss anything. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what's coming on the horizon. Okay. Just telling you what's out there. All right. The the plus to that is um, if you are putting in a kitchen now or you're adding some lighting, you you only need one junction box for a linear light like that. So picture a light that is very long on the horizontal. And it could run the expanse of your island or your mm-hmm. table or your counter, something like this. So you really only need one junction box to then illuminate all those lights. And that is really oh, nice okay. because mm-hmm. each mm-hmm. junction box costs you money with the electrician mm-hmm. or effort True. to put it in. Um, and yes, and no, not A, not every pendant light is dated. And B, even if it is, that doesn't mean you need to be going changing anything. But if you do have pendant lights and you're now listening to this and you're giving them a second thought, then maybe you want to change the uh, shade on them somehow. Just updating a shade as you do on a lamp occasionally can really make a big difference. Great idea. And, you know, we were talking about the open shelving. You were saying you hadn't really been seeing it. And I said, I'd been seeing it. Where I've been seeing it is with iron shelving that actually kind of sits on the countertop and goes up and it's open. And it was really uh, very unique looking. I thought it was quite beautiful. But again, I'm not sure I would be doing that. But it's just a very interesting look. So that's that may be on the horizon. As so well. like a shelving unit instead of a cabinet? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh. But it was iron instead of wood. Oh, wow. So it would sit on your cabinet and go up. Well, Well, I think it was sitting on the cabinet. I need to go look at the picture again. But it was was attractive. I mean, you could do that, right? So Mm -hmm. even if you wanted to try that for a while, you could always remove that. Yeah. Although I suspect it's not super cheap to buy. You know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One thing that I've been talking about a lot over the course of the two plus years we've been doing this show. Yes. Mirrors in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. I love a mirror. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a great so idea. that's really on trend for 2019. I currently have two mirrors in my kitchen. And so I would suggest if you don't have a mirror in your kitchen, grab one. You probably have one in your storage someplace or take one off the wall someplace else and just walk around your kitchen, see where you might put it. It will do things to your kitchen as it will do in any other room. Really expand the space, uh, give it some interest and give it some additional depth. Yeah. And one more thing I had is to add some artisan items to display them. Uh, I know we love all the handmade uh, pottery that that in North Carolina where we love to go. And, you know, I mean, but maybe you have something different, but just anything kind of beautiful and handmade or some beautiful bowls or any kind of dishes, I think, a beautiful teapot, any beautiful piece. I think it's fun to display those in your kitchen. Yeah. Yes, it's lovely. And then one last thing, if you have an island – um, or you think about putting in an island, it, we're seeing more of a freestanding island. You know, in the years past when kitchens were going, it was kind of this massive piece of furniture that seemed to be really grounded to the floor. Um, it may or may not have had like sort of bun feet, but it really felt like a very substantial. Mm-hmm. Uh, Didn't you call them the runways? Well, some I do have some friends that uh, islands could be dance floors or runways. They're very, very mm-hmm. large. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it really depends on your kitchen, also the size of you as to whether or not something like that's going to work for you. But we're seeing for 2019 more of a freestanding island, something that kind of more like looks like furniture, right? Looks more like furniture, mm-hmm. more, a I little love more that leggy. Look. It's beautiful. Not as ornate. Storage underneath. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a great look. And the beauty of that is that's something you can buy, put in your kitchen. And then when you move, you can take it with you. You can change it out. It's not permanent like a built-in island. So I do love it for that reason. 
Yeah. And if you, even if you felt like, oh gosh, I don't have room for, I don't have an island, A, or, and I don't think I have room for an island, you might have room for something like this that's mm-hmm. smaller and freestanding. Right. And sometimes you can get them on wheels. You could just move it out of the way. You know, when you wanted to have a dance party or, you know, you had a, more people in your kitchen or you just were busy making a big meal and you wanted to be out of the way, you could then scoot it off to the corner and make it sort of a bar cart or something like that. But I think that that can be a real nice addition to a kitchen. You know, in our old house, we had an iron stand and it had granite uh, shelves on it and wheels. And it was very small. We didn't have a large kitchen, but we had that in the island, in the center. And we used it as an island and we had, you know, uh, pots and pans and bowls underneath it. It was fabulous. I love that. It was so fantastic to have one other workspace in there in such a small kitchen. So I, you know, I suggest that that's a great idea to, to look for something like that. If you have a smaller kitchen and think you don't have room for an island, you might, you might just look around. Yeah, that's yeah. the key. So what Anita just said is so true. Look around. You know, you're hearing now what we're saying, what we're seeing on the horizon for kitchens. Just look at your kitchen with new eyes, you know, with some of these thoughts in your head. Hey, how can I incorporate that? You know, do, do I want to paint something? Do I want to add a little island? Hey, maybe I want to update the lighting. These small changes can really make a big difference. And we're certainly not saying, you know, throw the kitchen out with the open shelving kind of thing. What, <laughs> what's that famous <laughs> saying? Don't throw the kitchen out with the open shelving. You know, we're saying to, it, it. this is just fun to know about and see what's coming on the horizon. And if you want to do some of these trendy tweaks, then, you know, we say proceed with caution with the trends. But yeah, jump on board with some of the, e- the things that are easier to change out if you decide in a couple of years that that's not for you anymore. Well, and if you're building a kitchen, I think it's nice to know what's coming versus what's going out. Right. You know, because there's, yeah, I mean, definitely I think classics are, are the safest way to go. But even that, it's hard to, that, that that kind of shifts a bit what's considered classic. Right. And this is no um, uh, criticism, I should say, of any of these people that work really hard at these kitchen design centers or at maybe some of the bigger box stores or at cabinetry places, but they may not be on the cutting edge of what's going on in the design world. They're seeing what, you know, it has been done, what materials they have available, and they may be showing you things that have been going on for a few years. So, you know, as you are, if you're hearing us, you're listening to us and you're listening to the trends that we're finding. We're looking at places that are, you know, f- more forward thinking, sort of like more on the edge of design and bringing it to you. And so you can hear about it now and incorporate it with any plants that you might be making. So, you know, it's not to say you shouldn't rely on some of the information that you're getting. It's certainly like if you're designing a kitchen about your, um, the functional triangle, you know, between the fridge and the sink and the stove and all that good information that someone in one of those uh, design centers might be able to give you, but they might not be sort of on the edge of design. So take all this information with you if you are planning to build a kitchen or change up the one you have. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. 
pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Yeah. Uh, Is that... Is that everything? Have you finished your suggestions? I think we've got a lot of new trends and we presented a lot of them. We have some other stuff we want to talk about today. We're going to have a new feature on decorating tips and tricks. And Anita's going to tell you about that. Well, the uh, we've changed the format recently where we have the listener uh, questions and tips at the end of the show. And it's gone... It's been so popular that we're adding another feature that is, other, is also seems to be very popular, and that is just kind of what we're crushing on. So that could be some product that we've tried that we like, or a blog, or an Instagram account, or a podcast that we listen to, or just something that we tried recently that, or something that we know about that that we enjoy. And so take a listen for that. It's going to be something we try to throw in and add something fun. And I thought I would start off with uh, my friends that I join every Friday for a French country Friday blog event. These are beautiful French country blogs and they link up their a beautiful post each week. There's just a lot of eye candy. If you like country French design, you're going to love this. It is organized by Lori at design enthusiasm and the blogs uh, in this event each Friday are design enthusiasm, the Edith and Evelyn vintage blog, country French cottage, Maison de Sink and Shabby Fufu. And then I'm also included. And we'll include a link to Design Enthusiasm. Uh, Lori's the one that organizes it. And it's always chock full of beautiful imagery and just some great ideas. So so that's my my crush. Oh, yeah. That's week. a beautiful um, blog event tour uh, that comes at us weekly. I really enjoy it. Yeah. So we just thought, you know, it's like you're our girlfriends. We're girlfriends. We're, this is like info your girlfriends would be sharing with like, oh my gosh, I just watched this great show or I just listened to this or hey, I just got this and it's changed my life. So info like that, we did recently did a show about what we're crushing on and everybody seemed to really love it. So we thought, let's just toss stuff in, well, you know, you why just hold gave, back? <laughs> I know. Well, you just gave me one today. I did. Which one? <laughs> The Brit Box. Oh, the Brit Box. Does anybody list, uh, watch all that sort of British TV? I just love it. You know, beyond Victoria and beyond The Crown, you know, there's all this British programming, whether you like detective shows or mysteries or uh, just beautiful places and just lovely accents to listen to. So um, my husband, who's really good at finding all these shows for me, found this thing and it's called BritBox and you can purchase it. I think it's probably $9. $9. Usually those things are. And it opens up literally this giant uh, world of British programming to you. And I can't remember off the top of my head what it's on, whether it's Netflix or something like that. So I'll put a link in the show notes to that. But yeah, I shared that with Anita because she likes shows like that too. I love BBC productions and uh, yeah, so I'm going to try it. I've been seeing it and I've been thinking, oh, should I do that or not? Because I already have access to a lot of them with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, but I'm going to try it and I'll let you know. 
Okay, and we do have a question today from mm-hmm. yes. Debbie L. Debbie's in Chicago. Brr. Debbie, I uh, hope you're staying warm. Debbie's question is about the rugs in her entry and kitchen. She sees these areas in her house get lots of action. Sounds like she's got kids and, you know, there's snow and mud and all kinds of things coming and going. Um, and so she would like to get some ideas on rugs that we think could you know, look great and also, you know, take all of that abuse. So her palette is sort of grays and whites with light oak floors. Well, um, you know, there's so many different ways you can go and different materials that are recommended for different areas. If this is something where people are treading on it coming in and out, I would definitely avoid something like cotton because cotton is going to be the easiest to stain and the worst to clean. Uh, Although I love wool in a dining room area, this looks like, this sounds like an area where What you really want to be able to do is take it outside and hose it off because it's got mud on it or, you know, whatever it's been tracked in. So I would really recommend uh, in this particular case, an indoor outdoor rug where you could literally put it on the driveway and, and hose it off with, with your garden hose out there. Uh, Then there's so many beautiful rugs. This one's a hard one. I hate to even recommend a specific design, because I'm not really sure what color she likes, but I probably would add some, I love adding color with rugs. I probably would do that. But again, I would go with a a good indoor outdoor rug there. Yeah, I I definitely agree. And I would go darker because obviously it's going to show less and a low pile. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking indoor outdoor, probably something in that polypropylene. Yes. That's going to be sort of some of the fiber or the fiber that's used in it. And yeah, and so many of those really look like wool. You know, it's not going to look like the old days when you had, you know, an outdoor rug and it really looked like an outdoor rug. It kind of looked like plastic. So you're not going to find that. A higher end, I think a great recommendation would be any of the Dash and Albert. They make beautiful indoor outdoor rugs, but you can find them uh, in all different price points and a lot of different sizes. Uh, if you shop on Amazon or any of those, uh, you know, online, you should be able to find a lot of different choices. Yeah. Overstock also has lots of rugs I've bought from them. Uh, yeah, you can find a lot on Amazon, but certainly I would be, you know, searching for the color that you want, but probably a polypropylene. And I agree, a darker color is for sure for this particular application, I think is absolutely the way to go. Right. And because it's going to get some abuse. Mm-hmm. Right. And and a lot of the indoor outdoor rugs, they're not going to need any sort of padding, which is probably good too, because it sounds like, you know, this rug might move around a lot too. So maybe you even want to find something that has some sort of coating on the back. So it's not moving around on your floor if kids are coming in and taking boots off and stuff like that. So Debbie, I hope that helped you. Uh, and probably a lot of other people have questions about these sorts of durable rugs this uh, winter because everybody's getting a lot of snow and rain and things like that. It's absolutely pouring here today. So I hope that everybody enjoyed today's episode. We had so much fun going over the trends for kitchens in 2019. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.